All righty, here we go. Episode three. We're back. I'm Ben. This is Greg. And uh, I guess, Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. I look forward to our little Friday chats. Yeah, good stuff. This is fun. And uh, yeah, I've got some feedback from from some people already, which is which is great, too, that they're they're enjoying it. Um, so we're gonna keep it going. And, uh, yeah, it's always a good time. So I think you got the first topic today that we'll dive into. So you kick it off and then, uh, I'm going to throw a few back to you. Sounds good. So I know last week we, you and I kind of touched on that story of when, uh, I think it was last year or the year before you and I collaborated on kind of like a quick money play. Like we needed to cook something up really fast and like make a couple bucks and uh, we put something together and it worked, right? It was like, I, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it was like $1,000 in 24 hours, 48 hours, something ballpark like that, which was, um, I mean, it was it was fun. And I mean, that's not a big deal in this world, but for somebody like just starting out, I mean, if you need a thousand bucks in 48 hours, it's a big deal. <laughs> so yeah. my question is is kind of related to that. So um, if you, if you needed to make a thousand dollars in 48 hours, like what would you do? And there might be two different answers because if, you know, think back to when you were just starting out and you don't have a ton of assets, uh, you don't have a ton of skills or experience. Like what would, how would you think about that? Like, how would you solve that problem? What would you do to make a thousand dollars in 48 hours? And contrast that to what you would do today if somebody asked you to do that. Yeah, no, this is, this, this one's good. And it's still, it's still fresh um, because that's happened to me a lot of like different times. And I'm trying to go back to like, yeah, when I didn't have even some of this online stuff, cause like that's the direction I'll kind of take this. But um, like there was a time when I didn't really have that. And I didn't have the confidence in, in being able to deliver a result or charge someone. So I'd actually go to, uh, I'm going to go back to something that I used to do that still works and, uh, is kind of anyone can do. And that's basically selling stuff on Facebook marketplace. Um, <laughs> some people, may or may not use Facebook marketplace, but it's basically the go-to marketplace. Now there's other ones out there that still exist, but people are really active on there. And when I was in, uh, when I was in university, I used to flip stuff. I used to buy stuff at thrift stores and yard sales and sell it on there. Now, are you going to make a thousand dollars in one go? Like maybe, or maybe not, but this actually like it does work. And the first thing you do is just look at stuff around that you already have that you're like, what can I sell? Or like, maybe it's like your parents' place and there's stuff that's lying around. That's like the easiest thing to do. You just list it. You take pictures on your iPhone, you list it. And depending on what it is, like you might get, you, you know, you might be able to move something within like, yeah, within a couple of days. Now, if it's something, let's say it's like, I don't know, like a lawn tractor, but like you could drop the price. So it's like, even if someone was just scrapping it they might want it for like 250 or 500 bucks, like something like that. So you just go and you try to price stuff so that it moves and you look at the low hanging fruit around you. Um, if you've got a little more time, hit up like thrift stores and stuff and see what you can find there. My favorite story. Now it wasn't, it wasn't 48 hours, but it was, um, it was a wheelchair you got for free at the dump that, uh, I ended up selling for like 480 bucks on eBay. Um, <laughs> and that took a little bit longer, but this can work on a fairly short time frame. So I, I say that one because it's like, it's not totally guaranteed, but it's, there's a good chance there's something lying around that you, or a few things lying around that uh, add up to a thousand bucks. So there's my, there's my first one. And then uh, I can give you like uh, a more evolved one as well. Yeah. Let's, if you had to do it today using yeah. any of the assets that you have control of, what would you do? Yeah, so I actually want to share an example because this just happened. Uh, it's really interesting that um, it's I'm still learning stuff as I scale this brand, but like cash flow can still be a problem even if you have a brand that's um, doing a few thousand dollars a day, which sounds insane, but um, you're paying for ads, you're paying for inventory, 
and the, the amounts that these, um, you know, whether it's an ad payment or a uh, an order for new product or ingredients, the amounts that those come in at um, get pretty high pretty fast. And then you've got Shopify payouts. You've got these gaps in uh, in your cash flow. So I was basically like kind of in this position again. I was like, shit, this is weird. I'm like doing pretty good, but I'm also like maxing out at some points. So here's what I did. Um, I looked at immediately in my sort of circle and network, um, who could I offer the skills that I've already built, which are copywriting, email marketing, uh, running ads, kind of like brand consulting. Like I kind of just took, took stock of the skills that got me uh, to where I am now. And I think I actually talked about, this is like since our last call, because I think I was like pitching you some stuff after the call. But uh, I was like, okay, I can definitely pitch someone on a good offer, but on a cold, on a cold connection, you know, that can still take some time mm -hmm. if you're, if you're cold emailing people. So I looked at my immediate network and uh, I was actually, I'm working with a Facebook ads kind of like mentor um, that I'm paying and he's been really helpful for, for learning the ads. And so what I was, what I started thinking was who can I pitch on uh, the services that I know I can deliver, which, and which are fairly easy for me to deliver as well. Like this is not going to be some crazy thing. And so I was like, I can write emails. I can write email newsletters. Um, and so I just looked at what this guy was doing. I'm kind of a success story for his program. I know he is, has a lot on his plate and wants to grow his, his brand and has an email list. So it was like an easy, like I can pitch this guy on his newsletter. Um, and so I did. And he said, yes. And he was like, yeah, like, let's, let's get the first batch going, send me a Stripe link. Um, so that was kind of neat because it was actually almost like easier than I thought. Um, I, I wasn't going out and like cold pitching people. So that was a cool one. Um, and then on that note too, uh, there's a few other people kind of in my community that when I put that feeler out there that, oh, I, I think I'm going to take on a few people to work with, there was some hands raised where it's like, okay, I should be able to close these. So it's, it's really neat how when your network changes, like there are more of these opportunities that, that come up. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that just happened since we last spoke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was like, yeah, it was like less than a week. Right on. Cool. Well, I have, I have an answer this, to this too. And uh, I have, you know, I, I cooked up this question and then just sent it to you last minute. So I've been thinking about it longer. And I think I have more of like a general answer. And, okay. you know, maybe this is helpful for people, maybe not. But it, it, if you need to make, if you need to make some money, like fundamentally, you need two things. You need something to sell and you need someone to sell it to, right? And so the the Facebook marketplace answer or like the thrift store arbitrage is getting something to sell and then finding someone to sell it to. That's what the marketplace does, right? And there's like, on, I mean, you could go eBay or whatever, although the, uh, that, you know, that probably will turn around in, in 48 hours. So those are the two things people need. And what people often struggle with is the thing to sell, right? And so we can go, like we can go thrifting, you can go to garage sales, uh, you can go to like the clearance aisle in a big retailer and usually arbitrage stuff pretty well onto Amazon or eBay or whatever. So like there's different ways to find something to sell. So the first thing I would do is I would find something to sell. And if I needed a thousand dollars in 48 hours, I'd, I'd think about like what I was going to sell and who I was going to sell it to, right? Do I need one do I need a single thousand dollar thing to sell to one person? Or am I going to have like ten hundred dollar things to mm -hmm. sell to, to 10 people, right? I could kind of think about how to play that. And um, like I've I I did this a couple of years ago. And like I was in a position where I had started to build my own audience, but I didn't really have anything to sell. I had someone to sell it to, but nothing to sell. And I um I was actually in a position where I needed to like I needed to make some money kind of quickly. And so I I I knew what a common pain point was for the people who followed me and uh just kind of at that moment I met up with somebody who was creating a solution, right? So they had a solution, it was going to be a course and I knew my people had this problem. So I like we set up an affiliate deal, I wrote a sales page in a Google Doc and put that in front of 
my people who I thought would be helped by this, by this program that this person was putting together. And the program was like a thousand bucks, right? And I sold 10 seats in less than a week, like more than 10 seats. Um, and it, it was, you know, it was like a good commission split. So, I mean, it was, it was a nice chunk of change, but basically I found something to sell and I had people to sell it to, and then did like $10,000 in sales in less than a week. And sometimes people have something to sell, but they don't know who to sell it to. And so maybe what you do for that thousand dollars in 48 hours is if you've got something to sell, you go find the person who has the people to sell it to, and you figure out some sort of revenue split because that's what this creator did. They had something to sell, but they didn't have the audience to sell it to. And so if we had not combined efforts, right? If this person was not, if we weren't in each other's network, this never would have happened. Like we each had a piece of the puzzle. We had to put it together. So, um, you know, when you're just starting out, um, you got to find something to sell and have someone to sell it to. And if you don't have both pieces, go look for someone that has one of the pieces. And like, there are people who can even pull in one, like the thing to sell and the people to sell it to have neither one, but they're simply the, the people who like, plug them both together and you can make money that way too. Uh, if I had to do something like this today, I have a bigger audience and I have more stuff to sell. So it's literally a button click. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think I was having that realization uh, revisiting this sort of, oh, I I think I need to uh, like turn up the revenue here you know, you kind of take stock of what you have and it's like, okay, what, what could I do? And I wouldn't say I'm a bucket, a button click away, but it was a much different scenario than when I was uh, starting as a freelancer from scratch two years ago. And so that's pretty neat that you, even if uh, some of the things you're working on uh, fail or you're, you're not there yet, um, you don't lose some of these skills and connections um, and they usually continue to kind of compound. So you might even not realize that you've got these opportunities. And then when you, when you look around and you're like, Oh wow, this is way better than when I started from scratch. So um, there's things to do in both positions, but it's pretty neat because as soon as you start kind of thinking about this stuff and leveling up and in these different areas, uh, I don't really think you go back to like ground zero ever. I, I don't know. I was thinking about that the other day, but it's kind of neat. I agree. You never go back to ground zero. It's just all stacks. Yeah. And that actually, that meshes really well into uh, my next one um, or my first one, I should say. Uh, well, yeah, I'll just jump to it now, which is uh, kind of like keys to non-needy networking. Um, yeah. On the tail end of what we were just saying, like, what is it? your network is your net worth or something like that. Uh, it's a cliche, but it's true. Um, one thing that's like been hugely impactful is, has been just meeting more people, just making connections. Uh, and I think it's hard to see at the start. Once again, if we take this back to someone who's like starting in on this journey, you, it's hard to see that. I think you're, I was definitely like, where do I get money? Like who's going to pay me? Like very, it's just like a needier mindset, which mm -hmm. is just, it is what it is. That's starting out. But like, I almost think I, I could have done a lot more kind of constructive networking. So I'm curious, just your tips for that. Actually, you, you kind of had something. I remember you had this thing. It was like, don't be an asshole. Yeah. Um, and, and so maybe you can unpack this a little bit from like that framework of, you know, if you are new, um, or even if you're not new, you feel like you have something to offer, but you're like, I don't seem to have this network or people to plug into. Yeah, definitely. I, I think there's two strategies and you can use them both at the same time. Number one is really simple. Uh, pay to be in the rooms you want to be in, right? I mean, it's simple, but not easy, right? Uh, because sometimes those rooms are expensive and you don't have the money. But I think that investing into mentorship and, um, uh, you know, masterminds or events or whatever, like there's, there's absolutely a time and place for that. And you just have to do some, some discernment about 
like wh whose community do you want to be in? Because there's different places out there. They all kind of offer something different and they have a different vibe. Mm -hmm. They attract different people. So, you know, do a little, I think it's worth doing a little exploring. And when, like when you see a, a mentor, somebody ahead of you who you really like, not only what they're talking about, but how they say it, then, you know, consider, take, take a look what they what they offer. Like, um, I know you've done this. I've done this. There are mentors who I have sought out because I like their style and I've paid a lot of money <laughs> to be in their programs or go to their events. And I, when you do that, you get to tap into the network of the other people that they attract. So that's an instant level up. Like you can't necessarily get into that room without paying to get the key. Right. And I know that uh, again, like, I recommend that, but I know that that's difficult to start at for a lot of people. So the other thing that you can and should do is just like you should as a, as a business owner, like we want to try to identify problems and then come up with solutions. If there are people who you want in your network, uh, it, identify what their problems are and offer solutions. So there are communities that I've been a part of that I've even paid to be in where I have simply contributed more than I reasonably needed to like taking some ownership of the community that I'm in. Right. Even though I have really no right or obligation to do that, but like, what kind of place do I want this to be? What kind of people do I want to be here and what do I want it to look like? And then intentionally create that, like spend the time to go in and be helpful and, and share what I already know openly and willingly. And, you know, that there are communities that I've been a part of for a very long time. And I believe that I have helped to create what they are, right? I, cr I helped to create a place that I would actually want to spend time. So that's just like find ways to give. And, and I have to say, like, if you show up in some gurus dms saying hey what do you need what can i help you with like that is also not helpful right their time is valuable so find ways to 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 do a give to help people out who you want to be a part of their world uh, but but do it in a way where you're not necessarily expecting some sort something in return right away right it's one of these things where you got to plant some seeds and make some deposits and you you have to believe that that will bear fruit, but you don't have control over that time scale. But um, starting that kind of thing now means, you know, in six, 12 or 18 months, you're going to be in a very different spot in terms of the network you can tap into. Um, and what we both just mentioned about, you know, making a thousand dollars in 48 hours, we both spoke about, uh, you know, that a lot of that depends on who you know, right? Who's in your network that becomes easier and easier to do as your network levels up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's kind of the over the overarching method way way to look at it. 100%. I've experienced the same thing. I also had a massive mindset shift that went from uh that went from like kind of oh yeah, this is supposed to just happen to paying to be in those rooms like when the time is right. That is 100% like what you should do. Um, whether that's a conference and a live event, whether it's an online community that that you like, um, it's an investment like 100%. And it's it's the people that that'll put you in contact with. It's it's uh, is a game changer. So I'll echo that for sure. And then the only thing I'll add is taking it right back to the beginning. I was I've been tweeting about this a little bit um, because I did this a little bit, but. I'm trying to do it more now and I kind of wish I'd done more of it is just getting on calls with people, even who are like, maybe not that much ahead of you, but like, can you just connect with people um, having conversations around the stuff that you're trying to do? Or if you're trying, especially if you're trying to be helpful, um, but just getting on a call, what are you working on? People love to talk about what they're working on. So if this is on Twitter, or, you know, pick a social media, whatever, wherever you're kind of active or building your thing. Um, even if it's not directly related to, oh, how is this going to grow my e-commerce brand? It's like, hey, this guy's kind of doing something. We've maybe liked a few of each other's posts. Hey, I'd love to hear what you're working on. 
can we get on a Zoom call? Super easy, um, super low risk. Worst case scenario, they'll reject you, but they probably won't. Like, so I just, I think that's such a, like a powerful and free way to do this. And if you have the time and it can be a lot of fun too. So that's the, that's the only other one I'll add. Um, cool. Sweet, sweet. Uh, what was the other one I had? The next one I had was best course you've bought for under a thousand dollars. We're in a world that's like inundated with courses now. And it's like, yes. it's a, it's like a, it's like a meme now, right? Like, do you have a course? Do you sell a course or yeah. all this stuff? And uh, I love courses. I think courses are great. And that was another mindset shift I had when uh, I bought like my first kind of like expensive course. And mm -hmm. I was like, is this just a scam? Like it's that scam mentality, right? It's all a scam. And there are bad courses, but there's also just like really good stuff that is like really worth paying a few hundred dollars for. So uh what, yeah, what courses have you found valuable or helpful or have made a difference that have been, yeah, maybe around or under a thousand dollars? Yeah. That's a really good question. And I have bought so many courses. It's hard to answer. <laughs> it's yeah, hard to yeah. answer. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I've got a couple things here. Number one, uh, I bought a course recently. Uh, it was basically like, it, it's a course that is no longer on the market outside of a high ticket program, but I found a link and I just like went through, I'm like, oh my gosh, is this still active? Because it's ridiculous. Like what this, the value it delivers is ridiculous. And I bought this thing, I think it was under a hundred bucks. It, this course should be multi-thousands. Like I, because of what it sets you up to be able to do with, with like running traffic into offers, like it's crazy, but it's not available. So I'm not going to say what the name is. I'm just going to say that because I was in the right place at the right time and I followed the right people and I was in the right community, I was able to like find a link that somebody had forgotten to deactivate and I went and bought it and they delivered it. And I just, I'm keeping that on the down low. I'm really sorry. I can't you just share annoyed more. everybody who's listening. <laughs> oh, I know. I know it's, but it's so good. And um, I'm sure it'll be available in the future and I'd be happy to to talk about it and even you know, send people to it when that, but I, I don't, I don't want to say the name of it and then have the the creator get inundated Fair enough. before they're ready. So um, maybe that's a tease for a future release. Um, another one, th this one also is a little tricky because I paid under a thousand for it, but right now it's not a, like, I think it's like 5,000. <laughs> so I don't, again, I don't know if this is helpful. Sorry guys, but it's uh, from one of my favorite mentors. Um, Travis Sago, he has a program that he created uh, called the Phoneless Sales Machine. And it is a way to basically sell mid and high ticket offers without a phone call. It's it's automated. It uses email. It uses chatbots and, and this and that. And the not only the tactics of how to run that process, but the, the thinking, like the, the underpinnings, the psychology and the strategy underneath it have literally changed how I do business. Uh, hmm. So it was one of the most uh, profound courses that I've ever bought. And it, it, it's funny, like uh, some people, some people get like when they're creating courses, they like the, the polish and the branding and all like the production of the videos, like that's really important. And this thing is like Zoom call recordings and some PDFs. But it is it it has delivered far more real world value than almost anything else I've taken. Mm -hmm. So um, what I can tease is that in the near future, I will have the ability to hook people up with this <laughs> so that you don't have to. And I have a little bit of uh, flexibility in pricing. I don't know if I could get un under a thousand, but if, if anybody follows me, it's something... Um, like it's not a big secret. It's something I'm going to be talking about and sharing in the next two weeks about uh, if this, you know, who this is helpful for. Because I do want to say, like, for an ecom brand owner, this probably isn't super helpful. It's more for people who have a service or um, some sort of high ticket info product. But for something like that, like if anybody's a freelancer with a with a high value service, like this is something that could crush it. So. Nice. Nice. All right. So go to that, whatever link Greg puts down there for his black hat course. I, 
Cash, I, I have no machine. link yet. I mean, okay. I, I'm, okay. I'll, I'll mention it in a future video when it's live. So right. like, no worries. There's no FOMO yet. I'm just, it's something that I kind of lined up in this last week since we last spoke. And I'm putting together what, what the details look like, but it's something that's helped me that I'm going to be able to offer to other people. So. Got it. Okay. Awesome. All right. I, I, same thing. I bought a ton of courses and I just like buying courses too. So like, um, Actually, here, I'll shout out to Gumroad, which is, I, we were chatting about this just briefly before. Gumroad's a platform where it just makes it really easy for creators or digital people with an audience to just sell a digital product, um, which might sound like unfamiliar or weird if you're not in that world. But if you are, then you kind of get it where it's like you can you can put together your own little video course and just sell it. And like, if you have an audience, it, you can just, uh, you can just uh, host this thing on Gumroad and people can buy it. So check out Gumroad. But I bought a lot of really cool like little courses there. So I'm going to highlight some of these ones because they're like, they don't cost that much and they've been really great. Uh, so the first two are by this dude called Daniel Vasallo, who once again, he's not really an e-com dude, um, but he's got a great um, Twitter sort of vibe. Uh, he was making like 400K a year with Amazon. Like he was a super high paid corporate employee, but kind of didn't like his life and left and decided to figure out what else to do. Um, but his approach is different than a lot of this entrepreneur stuff you hear. His, his approach is what he calls placing like small bets, which is basically starting lots of mini businesses without very much investment. Um, and I, I really like his approach to this whole thing. And if I could recommend like one course that someone could start to think about things differently or potentially create other streams of income, um, he has a community now called the small bets. I think it's smallbets.com and it's a discord. Um, he, there's an actual course that he takes you through. Then there's also a discord of other trainings of people coming in and they're all these mini courses. It's like how to start a LinkedIn audience. It's like how to, um, publish your first book and have it make you a few hundred dollars a month on Amazon. It's all these cool little things about, uh, using what you already have or taking like small leaps to create, uh, different streams of income. Now, once again, is that it's like different than building an e-commerce brand, but it might get you to think that you even have ways to come up with new brands, or maybe you're sitting on something that you don't realize you are. That's like, oh, this is kind of a brand. If I just do this and this and, oh, my friend is this email list. That's already the audience. Like, could I just launch this in the next month and see what happens? It's that kind of thinking. So definitely check that out. Uh, it's a small bets community and Daniel Saul is the name. I'll link that one down below. Um, I had another one too. Uh, there was this Twitter audience one that there's a lot of grow in social media courses, but this was another one on Gumroad. I think it's like $70 and it's like um, kind of a neat angle on how you can grow a Twitter audience faster that I've utilized to some extent. Um, and it's a little counterintuitive because it kind of gets into how the algorithm works with people seeing tweets and replies. So it's about being more active and replying to grow an audience like faster. So it's just kind of a neat thing. If you're doing more of this networking, if you're trying to grow a social platform, um, it was, it's been kind of helpful to me and I just like the angle the guy took on it. So I've got a few more, but like, I'll just leave those, <laughs> I'll leave those ones there. Um, and uh, people can check that stuff out. Uh, for the last one, I want to just bring it back around to maybe what some of this audience is dealing with. And that is, uh, why Facebook ads still work and why you should learn them right now. So, uh, you can maybe just comment on that or what you're seeing or thinking. I know, I don't know how, if you're currently running them, I know you have at different, uh, points and things like that, but mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of highlight this because, uh, there's a lot of like noise in the ad space right now. And, uh, I think people people are kind of like not maybe sure what platform to advertise their brand on. So yeah, yeah, go ahead and, and that's then I'll great. Jump in. Yeah. So at this very moment, I'm not running uh, ads for anything, <clears throat> but I, I, I run ads on and off all the time for different things. And what I'll say, you know, cause I have like uh, my, my, my email list is kind of like an info product slash service. Uh, I do, I do e-commerce stuff. And I've run, um, I'm not like a big baller with Facebook ads, but I've spent a lot of money on Facebook ads mm -hmm. over the last few years. And I'll, I'll say two things. Number one, 
I believe that they are easier to run and more effective right now than at any time. <laughs> like if you if you spend some time learning how this works and get it dialed in, it is a ridiculous lever that you can pull to grow your business. And I know you've got some real specific stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know the specifics, but I know you've done well with Facebook ads with your brand. So the other thing I'll, I'll say is that there are different objectives that you can set up an ad for. And for most people listening, the only objective you should ever use is conversions, mm -hmm. right? That is, that is where we get the secret sauce of their targeting algorithm showing the right ad to the right person. But essentially it goes back to that other thing. Like you need something to sell. Mm -hmm. Facebook ads work best when you have something to sell. And then Facebook is the mechanism that finds people to sell it to. But if you have nothing to sell, then you're going to spend money on a whole bunch of crap, to be honest, yep. like very hard to make it work if you don't have something to sell. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's great. And yeah, I will echo that. I think it's the best time that it's ever been to run them. Someone who was early on would probably disagree with me there, but I, I didn't run them at that time really. So uh, the main thing, the main thing there is just with the switch in how they target. So you probably heard people complain about the iOS updates and stuff. And it was like, it doesn't work anymore. And we got killed by, you know, the Facebook updates. I, I'm not saying that's not true. Um, it didn't happen to me because I wasn't running ads at the time. But when I jumped back into ads after not using them for a while in this past year, um, I set it up for conversions, like Greg said, and I selected what's called their advantage plus option. Um, there's other ways of doing it, but this means all you select is the country uh, and the budget. Okay, so you, you make a campaign and conversions is your objective and you select uh, the country and you select how much money you want to spend per day. And then you build a creative, which is your videos or your your statics, your, your posts and your headlines. And going back to what we covered last week, like that can be some of the stuff that's already worked for you, maybe on Instagram or, um, or a, a short video. And then Facebook kind of does the work. It finds the people who that creative, which if it's just, if it's any good, there should be, they should be able to find people who are interested in that. And uh, all you need to do is kind of tweak your creative and test new uh, headlines. But it's not all this micro interest targeting or you've got to find the right pocket of people. Um, it does a lot of that for you. So I, I think it's really easy to learn right now. I think that uh, it's kind of popped the bubble of this like Facebook mystery with ads where it's like, what's the secret Facebook ad strategy? It's like, Going back to what you said, it's having a, a product to sell and a, and a good kind of brand behind it. Um, I think that's more of the challenge now. It's like you can't just drop ship stuff as easily maybe because the awareness level of people is much higher. Their trust is a big factor, but that's stuff that you build out on your end with, okay, having a legitimate product and a legitimate brand. But yeah, it's really cool um, and you can test stuff very easily. I made a video on my phone and I'm not a video editor. Um, there's an app called CapCut that some people might know. It's I think it's free. Um, I made a video in like an hour with some like mashups of of uh, testimonials and and um, clips of videos. And it has made thousands and thousands of dollars. Like it is wild to see. Um, now it's a great ad, um, but other people are doing the same thing. And I'm I'm looking around and seeing just what other brands are doing with their ads. And it's like, Right now, this stuff is is working. Um, short form video is obviously like a big thing. Um, and people are used to watching videos that people are just whipping up on their phones with whatever it is, TikTok or Instagram. So um, I'm not even saying you have to make a video. Like the first ads that worked for me were literally a picture of my product, <laughs> just like a static. Um, and I ran that and started getting results. So this is stuff like you could learn in an afternoon for sure and just test something out for literally 30 or 50 bucks a day and see if you can you know, break even or then start getting a return. So I think it's super cool. I think uh, if you've gone through the proper steps with setting up a, a brand and a page and um, and have a product and maybe some reviews, that it's it's a great time to 
test this stuff out. So that's, that's what I got to say. Awesome. I love it. Uh, and that ad keeps showing up in my feed, by the way. Okay, nice. Re you're retargeting me then. Yeah. Well, that's another interesting thing when you get into the more of the weeds is you've got to start excluding people uh, who are your, already your customers mm -hmm. because it will serve up to with no with no restrictions at all. It will reserve to the same the same audience. So yeah. Um. But it's I mean yeah it's working. Um, yeah, with that being said, I think that's like most of the main topics I had, mm -hmm. I'm going to drop a few links for anyone who's like earlier on, I've been having some fun, like making some free kind of like brand branding guides, which is like, if you're starting out or if you're trying to, uh, create more of an edge or more of a, a vibe with your brand, I'm super interested in how do you create that kind of emotional connection with, with your customers that your ads like will work. And so people will want your product. So I'll link up, uh, they're free. I'll just link them up below. And, cool. uh, I, yeah. and inspired by, by your really, really generous and helpful links, I decided to come up with my own. Uh, it's helpful, but slightly less generous. It's not free. <laughs> so what I did, I mentioned earlier that, uh, that I wrote a sales page in a Google doc mm -hmm. and that that sales page made $10,000 in a week. So what I did is uh, the particular offer for the, that that was for is no longer available. So I went and pulled up that that old Google Doc. I just kind of took out information about the very specific thing, but I left all the sales copy in there. And then I added, uh, like in the editor, I added comments throughout the entire sales page explaining like what each section mm. is, uh, trying to kind of like walk people through why the like why all that is in place, like why it is laid out exactly the way that it's laid out, trying to set it up almost as a template that somebody could take and then plug in their own thing that they're selling and their own people they're selling it to, and then throw that out in the world and, you know, help, help them to, to make some money too. So yep. uh, if that is helpful to anybody, I stuck it into like a, a little download thing. <clears throat> I have a link for it. I'll tell you this, because um, I have to throw in some scarcity and urgency, right? I'm going to price this PDF at something like something between 50 and 100 bucks, right? Because it it can legit legitimately help somebody make 10 or 100 times that much. But mm -hmm. for the first week after the release of our video, I'm going to, it's going to be a ridiculous discount. I'm not going to tell people what it is, but it's going to be ridiculous. It's a no brainer. So nice. yeah, click the link to see it and the price goes up when we release the next video, but you can check it out. Dude, that's great. I love it. I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll grab it because this is super cool for anyone's in like the info, like world's coaching side of things. Like it's a really easy way to set up like a, basically like a really high converting landing page for your product. And it's super simple. Um, so if you have an email list or something, um, yeah, this is it's it's kind of fun stuff. So check it out. But uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for coming out, everyone. And yeah, drop the like, hit the subscribe. Every uh, these drop every Saturday, and uh, we'll we'll keep going with this stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys all uh, next time. Thanks.